Welcome back to Code Station 33. Today what we're going to look at is defining functions. We've already looked at using some functions. We use the math functions uh, like square root and cosine and we've looked at printing with methods that we found in the serial library. Today we're going to look at how to create our own functions inside of Tinkercad. So let's dive right in. So the first thing you're going to have to do is put on an Arduino Uno. We're not going to do any buildings with any circuits. We're going to just jump right into code. And I'm going to switch this just to text. And we're just going to look at the text. So before we go into creating our own functions, I want to point out that we already have two functions that come automatically with our code when we create a Arduino project. The first is setup and the second one is loop. And this can give us a lot of information about how a function is designed and how we would go ahead and create our own functions. So it's a good template. The first thing we should look at is the word void. Now we're going to do more with this in a later lesson, but void means no information is sent back from the function. The function just carry out its task and moves on and goes back to the uh, normal operation of the sketch. In this case, the first thing that happens, we know, is that setup runs and I have it beginning the serial monitor because we might need that. And then it only runs one time. Then we have another function down here called loop and loop again is void means it returns nothing. And it's going to run repeatedly over and over again. Now that's built into our sketch in Arduino, that it's told to run loop over and over again. Any other function that we design, we have to do a specific trigger that will make the function execute. And for our purposes, the trigger is going to be a call. Essentially, we're going to say the name of the function in order to get it to do what we want it to do. So we're going to start with a very simple function and it's going to be a signature function. So I'm going to make it void just like we have the other ones because I don't want it to send any information back. And we're going to do a signature name. Now these parentheses here, this means it doesn't have any parameters. So we're not sending any information to the function. We'll look at that more later in another lesson where we actually send information to a function. Anything that we put inside of this function, now sometimes we call this a method, depending on what language we're using it, but here in Arduino we call it a function, will execute only when we call the function to execute. So no matter what code I write in here, nothing's going to happen until I tell the computer to execute that function. So I might want to do my name maybe the school I teach at oh, I forgot my quotes. There we go. And maybe some words of wisdom. So now this is my signature function. You'll notice that when I run this and I turn on my serial monitor, the only thing it's doing, it's saying hello world over and over and over again because I did not trigger my function 
inside of my other method, the loop method. So right now, it's pretty much ignoring this function that I wrote. So in order to get it to trigger that function, I have to say the name of the function. And I gotta use parentheses. And now when I run it, it keeps calling the function within the loop over and over and over again. And it's saying, Thomas McLaughlin, let me stop it and you can see it. New Hope Silver School District, never stop coding. Now, it's actually cutting off of it there because I stopped it, but you could see it up here. It says the whole thing right there. So I essentially made my own command where Java, not Java, excuse me, Arduino programming language can go ahead and execute that command for me. One of the things that we did in our last lesson was to make a song. And it might be helpful if we could use functions to play those songs. So we could have different functions play different songs and just call those functions within our program. There's a little problem with that. Inside these curly brackets, we call that scope. Anything with inside these brackets, which we call braces, are contained in the same scope. So anything we define, like a variable, within that scope must stay within that scope. So for example, if I say int my value equals 10, go 20, 10. And then I can print it out like that. The variable my value only lives within this function. So if I go up here and I try to print it, I'm going to copy the same statement. And I try to print my value, I'm going to get an error when I run this because my value, that variable, does not exist within the loop scope. So let's run that and see what happens. And there we go, we get our error. It says, seems like your code has some error, and it says, error, my value was not declared in this scope. It does not exist within that scope. Even though it exists within this scope and we're calling this function, my value does not exist within this scope. So we cannot use it in any way inside of this loop. We can only use it inside of this function down here. So we have to tell our computer that we're going to call this and my value, let me comment that out, only lives within that function. So it should only be used within that function. And now when I look at it, it runs just fine. It says hello like we expect it to and the number 10 over and over and over again because that's what it's doing is printing out the number 10. Funny enough, I could create another variable called my value exactly the same way inside a loop. And even though these two variables have exactly the same value to them, they are totally separate from each other. So this variable, my value, lives within this set of braces, this scope, and this variable, my value, lives within this scope. So when I run this, I'm going to get both the 10 and the 20 printing on the screen. So you can see both the 10 and the 20 printing there on the screen. Let me make it a little bit easier to see by stopping it. See, we got the 10 and the 20. The 20 is coming from this set of braces, this scope. The 10 is coming from this scope, and they are totally separate. They have nothing to do with each other, even though they have exactly the same name. Now, we try to avoid this in code, where we create two variables that have exactly the same name in two separate scopes. It, it can get confusing, so we normally don't do this. We might want to call this something else just to keep it clear that we're doing two separate variables. But 
the computer doesn't really care. The computer will keep them separate for us. That brings me to some vocabulary words. My value to and my value are local to their respective functions. My value to is local with respect to loop. My value to is local with respect to signature name. I can go up here and create another my value. And I can print my value three in loop and I can print my value three down here in signature name, it'll print the 30 twice, 30, 30, because that is global. It is outside of both of these scopes. We can kind of think about the whole sketch being in braces and this void setup and this void loop are within the braces of the whole sketch. So my value three is part of the scope of the whole sketch and since loop and signature name are part of the, the scope of the whole sketch, each of them can use my value and have access to those variables. They are all at the same scope level because it's a global variable. The local variables, my value two, can only be used here in loop and my value can only be used here in signature name and nobody else outside of those functions would have access to those two variables. So those are some really important vocabulary words. So to summarize, when we are creating a function or using a function that is already built in, we have a couple pieces. We have the return type, which in this case is void. It's not returning anything. And that's all we've been doing is just void types. We have the name of our function loop signature name, setup, they're all names of our functions. We have the parentheses to grab any parameters that might be being sent to it. And we're going to do more with parameters in another lesson. And then of course we have our braces which are declaring our scope. So that's how you create a function and how you call one. In our next lesson, like I said, we'll be looking at what happens when you want to get information out of a function or send information to a function. I'll see you next time. Keep coding.